when you tax people more, they they definitely work less, and they save less, and they invest less, and all, all that's bad for the economy. So who's going to get hurt? People who are on pensions. They're 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 going to have their wealth snatched away from them if you increase the capital gains tax. We've been through this before, and and the evidence of how bad these ideas are, look at the 1970s and the trouble we got into in the 1970s. All these tax increases eventually produced what? Stagflation. President Joe Biden's proposal to significantly raise the capital gains tax rate in the U.S., outlined in the 2025 budget, which was unveiled on March 11th, has stirred a hornet's nest. Professor Steve Henke, an expert in applied economics, explores how increased taxation can result in reduced work, savings, and investment, ultimately damaging the economy. He points out that states with high taxation rates, like California and New York, experience outbound migration as a consequence. The crux of Biden's plan is to elevate the capital gains tax to a staggering 44.6% for individuals with a taxable income exceeding $1 million annually and an investment income surpassing $400,000. This would mark the highest capital gains tax rate in U.S. history, eclipsing even the previous high of 40% witnessed under President Jimmy Carter in the late 1970s. Biden's budget blueprint doesn't stop at capital gains tax. It also aims to increase the corporate tax rate from 21% to 28%, abolish deductions on salaries exceeding $1 million annually, impose a 25% minimum tax on individuals with assets exceeding $100 million, and eliminate exemptions on gifts and estate taxes. Henke raises a question. Who will lose when capital gains taxes are increased? He suggests that it's the pensioners who bear the brunt, as their wealth could be significantly eroded. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen came under fire from Republican lawmakers Tuesday over a quip from President Joe Biden about letting tax cuts enacted by predecessor Donald Trump expire. Yellen repeatedly emphasized that the administration's principles on tax policy had not changed, and that Biden supports retaining tax reductions for families earning less than $400,000. Henke stressed that instead of implementing broad tax increases, the priority should be on reducing government spending. Let's delve into the video to gain further insights. Before we begin, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. So who's going to get hurt? People who are on pensions. They're, 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 they're going to have their wealth snatched away from them if you increase the capital gains tax that that's 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 where the thing hits and and by the way you said the proposal is to jack the the headline rate up to 44 percent in the united states on an inflation adjusted basis it's already that high in the united states so by making the statutory rate go up even higher than it is at present, it'll, it'll punch that rate, uh, inflation adjusted, even up higher than it already is. So they're, they're, it's, it's a bad idea in both places. Uh, it, it hurts pensioners. It hits pensioners very hard. When you tax people more, they, they definitely work less and they save less and they invest less, and all, all that's bad for the economy. Plus they, plus they move around. The, 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 those in states where they have high progressive personal income tax rates do what? Well, they move out of those states. They, they move to places like Florida or Nevada or, te or Texas. So people aren't just static. They, they, they're, they're not gonna st stand still if you, it's 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 basically supply and demand. Well, we we understand the theory, but can you can you draw on some examples for us? Um, yeah, just just look at the United for, for, States. Look at the look at the states that are are taxing heavily. California people are moving out. New York people are moving out, and where do they go? They go to places where they have low tax rates. Florida, Texas. Nevada, if you want a healthy economy, is to bring down government spending. Government spending has is, is been the, the, the killer in this, or the, in, in the United States. That, that, that is the main source of the increased and sustained deficit 
that we are witnessing in the United States and the record level of debt to GDP. And, and by the way, by reducing government expenditures, you, you kill two birds with one stone. You not only reduce the deficit or eliminate the deficit, but also you eliminate the crowding out of, of the private sector by the public sector. It's government spending that does the crowding out. If Donald Trump wins re-election as president in 2024, he may seek to revamp the Federal Reserve more to his liking and attempt to bring the central bank under his influence. Trump upended the tradition of presidents not weighing in on the Fed's monetary policy decisions while he was in office, publicly attacking Fed officials and Chair Jerome Powell. The Wall Street Journal reported some Trump allies want to cut the independence of the Fed if he is re-elected president and compel the central bank to consult with the White House on monetary decisions. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is mounting a new defense of the Federal Reserve's separation from politics. Henke himself supported the idea of auditing the Fed. He questioned why the Fed shouldn't be subject to scrutiny when private companies undergo audits regularly. Now, let's redirect our attention to a video. If you go back to a, a, a few years ago, there was, there was a movement called Audit the Fed. And, and the Audit the Fed, all, all that said was that there, there would be an outside audit of the Fed, what, what the Fed is doing, and uh, not, not, audit their, their policy actions and so forth. Now, it turns out one, one person behind Audit the Fed happened to be Art Laffer. And Art Laffer definitely is a, a, a close advisor of, of Trump. And therefore, there, there is kind of a centella of plausibility in this. You see what I mean? Because but years ago, when Audit the Fed came up, Laffer was, was one of the leading people. So, so let's keep on with this. Where was Hanky on this? Han Hanky was supporting the Audit the Fed. Why, why wouldn't you want to audit the Fed? We audit private companies. Why wouldn't you audit something the government was doing? Wait, are, are you sorry? Are you suggesting that there is currently no audit system in place for the Fed? No, there isn't a broad audit of the Fed and their policies and what they're doing and so forth. The Fed doesn't want anyone looking at their business, and and that's why they use this this mantra of independence, is as if the Fed really is independent. I mean, th this is this is kind of a de jure they might be, de facto they aren't. The Fed is influenced by lots of people in Washington, not not only the White House, but what's going on in Capitol Hill and and so forth. But so so that's the kind of background. I I wrote this. Up uh, by the way, I can't remember the, the the I think it was in 2019. I wrote a Forbes column about this. You can you you can Google a thing probably and and find it on Forbes. I think I think my article is something like audit the Fed or some something like that. And by the way, one one person who was we we don't know how Milton Friedman would have reacted to that particular legislation because. Milton was had passed away and gone to the other side by the time that legislation came up. But but my interpretation of Friedman, what Friedman, he would have been for it. President Joe Biden's latest budget proposal casts a shadow of a $5 trillion tax hike over American households and businesses. Among its provisions is a 25% annual minimum tax on unrealized capital gains for individuals with incomes and assets surpassing $100 million. This proposal marks what experts call the most substantial capital gains tax increase in a century, potentially reshaping the tax landscape for high net worth individuals and businesses. How might this proposed tax hike affect the behavior of high net worth individuals in terms of wealth management and tax planning strategies? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content helpful, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us.